Hello, everyone, and welcome to Earthing Live, where we answer your questions live on this webinar. Whether you're joining us on Zoom or Facebook or YouTube, uh, welcome. We're going to just wait a couple minutes here to let everybody get logged in. I will be joined as usual by Clint Ober. He'll be answering your questions that you ask here live. So go ahead and uh, start getting those questions submitted. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes just to let everybody get logged in. Welcome if you're just joining us. We uh, not only are here on Zoom, but we're streaming on Facebook and YouTube. So welcome, we'll get started in just a minute. Welcome to Earthing Live, where we answer your questions. We are here on Zoom, as well as Facebook and YouTube. Before we get started, real quick, uh, just a reminder that this, everything you hear in this webinar is not to replace any medical advice that you've received from your practitioner or healthcare uh, professional. Please check with them before making any adjustments to your regular health routine. All right, hello everybody. Um, we do this Earthing Live every Monday at 3.30 p.m. where we answer your questions. Um, you can ask your questions through the Q&A section in the uh, webinar or you can go ahead and ask them through Facebook or YouTube. As always, I have my customer service department working here in the background, helping me out to make sure everybody gets taken care of, all your questions are answered. If you have any general customer service questions like order tracking, how to place an order, you can contact them at help at earthing.com. They're excellent, they'll be able to help you out. So as always, we have Clint over here. He is our founder and CEO. Um, welcome, Clint. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you. How are you doing today? Present. Good. I'm present and on purpose. Good. Ask me a question. All right. All right. <laughs> let's jump right into it. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, this, this is a good one. Um, how far along are you in the development of earthing shoes? And are there any new products on the horizon? We just talked about shoes this morning. Um, yes, we are working with two different groups to uh, produce a conductive, the first series will be conductive flip-flops, um, <clears throat> generic ones that everybody can wear, but they'll be fully grounded when they're wearing them. They won't be a plug or just a sensitive ground on them. And um, <clears throat> uh, we were hoping to have those out this spring, but COVID and all of the delays last year kind of just set us a year behind. So <clears throat> we're maybe we may get some out in July, August, but um, that would be the earliest. Right. The other new products are the dog beds, which are, mm -hmm. are they're, I think they're going to be available here pretty quick. Uh, three different sizes. They're hundred percent grounded. Uh, they have the conductive carbon cover and they're, pretty bulletproof uh, for pets. So, and um, <clears throat> they're filled with a, um, uh, a shredded sort of pure film, uh, foam material. And so it's really a nice product. And um, <clears throat> the whole concept is uh, to ground the pets and get them off your bed, get them off their own bed. Um, but anyhow, it's, th those are available. I think you're pretty quick. And then we have other products, but they're still a little too early to talk about them. All right, I know we are forever. Well, that's one of the main things you do is developing new products and perfecting the ones that we currently have. So this next question is from Michelle Johnson. To... And it is... This next question is from Michelle Johnson. And this is one of the most popular uh, questions that we get. If you sleep on the new mat, do you decrease your grounding if you sleep in socks? People are constantly asking if they can wear clothes or have something between themselves and the product. Well, 
the way the new grounded mats are designed, <coughs> excuse me, is to put them on the bed and put a simple sheet over the top so you can lay down and go to sleep. Now, if you're measuring them with a, with a voltmeter, you may not get immediate conductivity. And even with the little uh, continuity tester we have, but if you <clears throat> test the product, I mean, that's what those are really designed for. But when you put a sheet over the top of it and you lay down on the sheet, within a few minutes, your body's going to perspire sufficient to hydrate the clothing and the sheet between you and the, and the carbon mat and rendering you uh, electrically connected to the earth or grounded. And, um, but that's the way it's designed. <clears throat> the, um, a lot of the people sleep with socks. I don't, you know, it depends. the most conductive parts of your body are your hands and your feet. Um, so it should be okay to sleep with the socks, but if I could tell you, <laughs> uh, I would say, you know, try sleeping without them. And the reason is because most of the ladies who, who have the sleep with socks have cold fingers, cold feet. The number one thing that happens after you sleep grounded or when you start sleeping grounded is it normalizes your blood viscosity and you get, and it improves your circulation. And that way the body can better regulate it, the temperatures of the extremities. You can go to the earthinginstitute.net and find information on this. And you can see actual studies where with the thermal imaging where grounded, ungrounded, the fingers are, uh, you can barely see the temperature in them because they're at room temperature or after they're grounded for 15, 20 minutes, they turn nice and, I mean, the blood flow increases and then the toes and the fingers warm up. So you don't need socks. Very good. Okay. Have you found that earthing helps people sleep better and stops their snoring? Well, yes. Um, we get lots of reports about, you know, the, the wife's writing in about the husband uh, stopped snoring or improved that situation. And um, uh, that's one of the number one, see what, you know, snoring is you, generally from inflammation in the, in the muscles, in the, in the um, airways and so on. And <clears throat> if you have inflammation, then the muscles get a little relaxed and then they don't control themselves. But after you've been grounded for any period of time, uh, snoring usually re reduces significantly. Uh, as far as improved sleep, sleep is subjective, um, but you also have to know that sleep is autonomic, meaning that it happens naturally. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to work about it. You just have to, when your body says, I'm tired, go to, and it'll go to sleep. The only reason that you would not go to sleep is if you, uh, if you have elevated cortisol, meaning your cortisol, uh, your fight or flight, or your sympathetic nervous system it is, um, it's like a bear in the woods. <clears throat> it's like your cortisol comes up and you're ready to fight or run, uh, or like sleeping with one eye open because there's a danger in the area. I mean, that's what cortisol does. And so <clears throat> generally if people are stressed or if there's um, anxiety, irritability or things going on uh, in your mind, then it can elevate your cortisol and that will interfere with your sleep. But <clears throat> if you can, uh, and one of the things grounding does is it reduces the inflammation, which calms the sympathetic nervous system because you feel better when you don't have pain the number one sleep problem in the world is pain. And um, <clears throat> so grounding will reduce the pain. You're going to sleep better. Yes, absolutely. Grounding improves sleep. All right. Uh, Brenda says, um, have you noticed the amount of prescription medicines you might take have decreased from grounding? Well, that's uh, not a question I can really answer without knowing a lot more about the conditions and whatever and so on. But again, um, <clears throat> when, when you get grounded, or first of all, if you're on meds and, you're, and you have inflammation and you have health disorder, then something is going on, something is interfering with your immune system's ability to maintain health. So if your health is compromised and you start grounding and it reduces the inflammation, 
then the immune system doesn't have to spend all of its time fighting and repairing the damage from the inflammation and it can go back to restoring and maintaining health. So in many cases, yes, there are lots of reports about people having to reduce thyroid meds or having to reduce um, blood thinners and so on. But those are people who do intermittent and grounded every once in a while, you, it's probably not gonna have an effect. But to, the only thing I can tell you is don't reduce your pills or your meds on any circumstances without your doctor's permission because you're on them for a reason. And if, the, if you're improving, your health is improving, then they generally re will reduce them or take you off of them. Very good. Linda is asking, what is the best way to clean face oil from the Elite Grounding Pillow? Face oils. Um, I would imagine just with a damp wash rag with maybe a, a very small amount of um, soap. I mean, whether it's detergent or face soap or just something very clean, like simple green is what most people would use in the uh, spa environments and so on. And then wipe it down, you know, with a clean damp rag to make sure there's no residue left. All right, and that goes for all of our um, black carbon products. You can just use a clean, damp towel. Mm -hmm. A little bit of soap if you need to. Yeah. Th think about like if you are going to, if you have a, a leatherette type uh, couch, or you would be somewhere how you would want to wipe them down. But they're, you, you, you don't need to throw them in the wash or anything. You just need to, to wipe them down because they're pretty, pretty rugged yeah. products. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump over. And, and I can see one other thing too, the sure. carbon. Are you there? The uh, bookcase. Yes. I think we're the having a bit of a carbon in the pillowcases. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh goodness. Okay, how do we settle that? Tell me when I can talk. <laughs> the connection seems good right now, so why don't you go ahead? There was just a minute there where it was breaking up. Okay, I just want I, I just wanted to say it in the the material, the carbon material in the sleep mats and the pillowcases are inherently antimicrobial. So <clears throat> they're, um, they're, they're, that's a real benefit that we don't talk about much. Mm -hmm. but that's all, I'm, sorry. Okay. Um, Joanne is asking, if somebody has a serious illness, does it take a lot longer for them to heal with earthing? Uh, again, it would be the nature of the situation, I mean, you know, uh, and it would be um, the environment that the person is in. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but what I've, over the years, I, I've learned this about grounding is most people, um, you know, I don't know if I can do this right, but I'll try. But <clears throat> uh, if a person is, you know, balanced, their health is normal. If most people are back and forth here, you know, they are, their health will go up and down a little bit. Their sleep will go up and down, you know, and so on. But people whose health is very compromised or closer to death, let's say, the further they are closer to death, when they start grounding, the faster they come back. Mm. And um, <clears throat> so, because what you do is you reduce the inflammation and then the immune system can immediately go back to work and restore health. That's what the immune system does. That's the only thing it does. And you, you, health is our most natural state. And, 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 and it all, your health is dependent to a large degree on the health of your immune system. So, but 
in many cases, you'll have an immediate result and, and a profound result in the next, or, you know, within a week or two weeks. Uh, but again, that's uh, subjective, meaning some people, it, it, it just depends on their living environment, their diets, their, their air they're breathing, they, do they, you know, all the, the other things that are involved with health. Um, but generally, the more compromised a person's health is, the faster you will see them rebound. But that's, I don't know what the health disorders are. I mean, if you're talking about arthritis, you're talking about various different things. Yes. Unfortunately, your, I think your connection is getting choppy again. Okay, are you there now? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. Greg is asking about Bluetooth earpieces. He's been using one for years instead of holding the phone close to his head. But now that he started grounding, he's wondering what the effects are of grounding while using a Bluetooth earpiece. It would have no effect other than the only thing the other thing is going to do is reduce inflammation in your body and calm your nervous system on the Bluetooth. All right. Nancy says uh, she just bought a grounding mat and she loves it. If she has grass outside or at the beach, um, what would be a be would that be better than to use the mat? Meaning, is it better to be on the earth as opposed to one of our products? Well, if you're on the earth outdoors, it'd probably be a little bit better, but not necessarily because the grounding's any different. It's just because your environment's different. You get some sunshine and that'd make you feel better, fresh air and a whole bunch of things. But <clears throat> generally speaking, the mats are designed to replicate standing or lying barefoot on, you know, standing barefoot on the earth or lying on the earth. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the earth's electric field uh, travels at the speed of light. So it doesn't matter, you know, I mean, it's, it's everywhere instantly once you get grounded. And uh, the electrons are absorbed into the body um, um, as your blood circulates from what we can, what we have learned. And uh, <clears throat> the repair, I mean, the re to reduce the inflammation, that's gonna start, that takes a little bit of time, but usually within minutes, uh, you'll see some major reductions. And the main thing is if you, have pain in your body and the pain starts to come down, then that means that the grounding is reducing the inflammation because you can only have pain. You have to have inflammation before you can have pain because pain is the messenger of inflammation. Um, did I answer that? I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, Terrence here is asking about the Earthing Institute. Uh, could you go ahead and kind of explain a little bit about the Earthing Institute and what you will find there? Okay, the Earthing Institute um, was uh, put together by Gaetan, myself, and Martin Zucker about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. <clears throat> and then we use it kind of as a repository for uh, all of the, the, re the research studies that have been done. Uh, there's uh, probably 25 plus peer reviewed published papers now. And then we have several. Um, other articles of interest. Um, and then there is a lot of, uh, we have a major question and answer section, the more popular questions and answers that have been uh, accumulated over the years. And then we have a few how-to papers, how to um, measure certain things, how to, uh, so it's really a great resource and it's designed to just be that. Uh, so people can go and, and especially a lot of the uh, people in the research community, they can go and research all of the studies and, and learn everything they can, you know, that we, that we know. 
And uh, occasionally some people add new things for us, but it's a great resource. And we will put the link to the Earthing Institute in the chat section of this webinar um, on the Zoom. Yeah, it's earthinginstitute.net. The car seat map. So we have auto seat maps that ground you while you're driving. How do they work while you're driving on rubber tires? Well, <clears throat> there's I need a pencil and paper here. <laughs> but anyhow, if you're sitting in a car, uh, the car is probably going to weigh, you know, let's say two ton, four thousand pounds, and let's say that you weigh two hundred pounds. Uh, so when you're driving down the road, there's a lot of static electricity created between the body and, and the seat. It's called tribocharging. It's all the little bounces and the movement and you're on a synthetic material. And so anyhow, you build up a lot of static charges on the body and it can be several thousand volts. Sometimes if you step out of the car and you notice a, a spark, that means it's around 5,000 volts of static charge on your body. Now, <clears throat> this normally bleeds off anyway, but when you're driving down the road, I mean, it is charging your body up and you have this static charge on and throughout your intestinal system and so on. Um, <clears throat> so when you connect the auto seat pad to the metal frame of the vehicle, there's about 4,000 pounds of metal. And the metal is connected to the negative side of the battery. So it's got a 12 volt negative charge meaning there's lots of free electrons that can move there. <clears throat> but, but basically it's really amounts to this. If, you're, if your body weighs 200 pounds, you're spreading a thousand volts of static electricity over 200 pounds. But when you can sit on the mat and the mat is connected to the car, now there's 4,200 pounds of metal and that static electricity is dissipated now over 4,200 pounds. So you reduce the static charge on your body by 95% and you feel a lot better. And in the studies that we did early on, the truck drivers, especially, the main thing that they observed was they had better night vision. They could see better, which meant they had uh, lower blood pressure and various things like that, but they had less fatigue and they just felt more alert and they, and they didn't feel the road rage type stuff as much mm -hmm. so but it's it's just a formula of weight now the there is some carbon in the tires uh, there will be some ground that will <clears throat> uh, some electron exchange when you're driving down the road uh, with the wind and all that's and so on but that's too technical to explain but the basic is just a redistribution of charge over a larger mass very good I'm going to jump over to Facebook right now. Um, Catherine has asked a question about how grand, grounding can benefit our six pets. Well, <clears throat> if you will go to the Earthing Institute, you can look at all of the studies that we have done for people. And the thing that we have learned that it, it uh, reduces inflammation in the body, which restores the immune function and the immune system can then go and restore health. Um, <clears throat> so this is one of the products that was tested on humans first. <laughs> and now we have ground products that the pets can, um, you know, normal type grounding uh, uh, pet beds, except that they have the conductive covers on them. Um, <clears throat> the thing I can tell you is this, and, and I don't mind repeating this, but um, the animals in the wild, cancer, uh, is very rare. They don't have the cardiovascular diseases. They don't have the lupus, the MS, the plethora of you know modern health disorders that humans are plagued with. Uh, on the other hand, the animals who live indoors with their owners, they all manifest similar health disorders as their owners, autoimmune diseases, inflammation related health disorders. So we know that when you ground pets and we know that pets love the grounding because we hear about it all the time, people talking about their, <clears throat> the, the pets love to get on the beds and under the covers and on the mats. And the cats are always sleeping on the, on the uni mats and, um, and so on. So anyhow, it's um, the only thing I can tell you, I don't know enough about what, you know, what's going on with your, your dog or pet, but <clears throat> it'll reduce inflammation. They're gonna feel better and they're gonna be healthier. 
uh, just like you see and read in all of the human activity reports. It's identical. They're mammals. Very good. Uh, Karen is, um, she has an interesting question. I like this. So she says she had a, a DEXA bone scan two and a half years ago. And last week she had another bone scan. My bones were pretty good previously, but this time around my doctor called and said that my bone density is better than the last scan. The only difference over the last year is that I have slept, sat and meditated grounded. The doctor's assistant sort of chuckled and said, I bet you're going to say that it's due to grounding. And I said, you bet. So am I crazy to think that all my grounding has improved my bone density? No, it's, it, we hear that quite a bit and we have uh, seen bone scans from different people in different periods. And, and what it is, is when you are ungrounded or living an ungrounded lifestyle and you don't have enough free electrons in your body to maintain blood pH, within you know, just a couple of uh, whatever the, the, the language is there, but it's like 7.2 or 7.4. And if it goes even two or three degrees past that, then you will die. You'll, have, you'll develop sepsis and die. Mm -hmm. um, so the largest reservoir of free electrons in the body is calcium in the bone. The bone is the reservoir. So what it does is this forever dissolving calcium and freeing up electrons to maintain blood pH. And then that's what causes uh, osteoporosis is you know, loss of calcium in the bone. So then <clears throat> once you start sleeping grounded, then your body no longer needs to dissolve the calcium in your bone. And then the bone, because when you're connected to the earth, there's a reservoir, uh, you know, infinite reservoir of free electrons. So then the bone starts, I mean, the body starts laying back on the laying the bone laying on bone building restoring the bones yes so yeah it's it's not something we've done a study on uh but it's pure uh, it's just very simple it's where are you going to get your electrons from when you're not grounded you have to get them from somewhere and you unless you have a blueberry drip or something <laughs> oftentimes you don't get sufficient uh, free electrons from food and so on so but yeah that's a, i'm glad to, that was brought up because a lot of people really need to know that uh and it's it's quite common and i hope somebody someday somebody does a study on it but it's very very simple very very profound okay maya is from australia she says hello from australia hello. Uh, she's been sleeping with the universal map for about a week um and she hasn't been sleeping that well with the mat. She keeps waking up at night and normally she does sleep well. So is this her body adjusting? Well, anytime, if you have been ungrounded for years or some to a large degree ungrounded, then you have um, you know, a lot of regeneration repair that needs to reoccur. Uh, so what happens is at night when you're sleeping, that's when, and, and if you're grounded, then the body has lots of free electrons so that it can go to work and begin the recovery processes. And I don't, you know, there can be lots of other things too, but generally speaking, uh, you'll start sleeping. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I, I only need to sleep four hours or six hours or whatever less time now, or I wake up at four in the morning and so on. Uh, <clears throat> there's lots, lots of other things going on when you connect to the earth, like at 4 a.m. your cortisol will start to rise and that's triggered by that time of the morning. <clears throat> Am I still coming to you okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, I lost my thought there. Uh, adjusting to sleeping. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it varies all over the place, but the main thing is how do you feel when you get up in the morning? Do you have more energy? Uh, do you have more vitality? Um, um, how do you get through your day a little better? You know, but, but again, <clears throat> ideally, you, you, your sleep should improve. You should be getting, most people say they go from six to eight hours of nice sleep over, unless their lifestyle dictates otherwise. All right. 
Maya um, has a second question here, a second part to her question is that when she tests with her multimeter, she finds that she gets very high reading if she stands on a wool carpet or sitting on wool under the wool underlay on her bed. But then when she touches the earthing mat, the reading shoot down. What's the story with wool? Um, <clears throat> electricity was discovered a few thousand years ago or a thousand years ago or whenever <clears throat> when they took wool and rubbed it against amber. You know, the, um, is that the right word, Amber? Yeah, the, the honey that petrified, yeah. I mean, the honey that comes out of the sap, that comes out of the trees. So when you rub the wool against it, it creates, you know, a, a uh, static charge and light makes the amber glow. So that's where electricity was discovered. So wool is a um, significant generator of static charge. If you rub, if you have a, wool shirt and you put it on and you go touch anything, there'll be a, you know, you can feel the static or see the static. Um, so <clears throat> when you touch the mat, then the static electricity on your body is going to bleed off, off quickly and ground it out. And so I hope that answered that question. Yeah. But wool, but wool is nice. It's, there's nothing wrong with wool, except that when you move around on it, it creates static electricity. But the same is true of a foam mattress. Anybody who has a foam mattress of any kind, and everybody does now, um, every time you roll over, I mean, you're creating movement of dissimilar materials, the fabric on the top of the mattress, the foam and so on. So it creates static charges. So you're sleeping in static, which we haven't talked a lot about the effects of static electricity on health, um, <clears throat> but inflammation is a static charge in the body. All right, uh, Julie is watching us on Facebook and she says, why does using the earthing mat make me feel so tired, but I can't use it for sleeping because it keeps me awake? Um, she does not say how long she's been using it. Usually we hear this question to, from people who are new. Okay, <clears throat> um, we'll say that one more time. Sure. The first she, um, when she uses the earthing mat, she feels tired, but then when she tries to sleep on the earthing mat, it keeps her awake at night. Okay, if, if you lay down on it and it makes you tired, that means uh, you need the rest. I mean, it's, uh, it's discharged your body because it's, it's starting to discharge the cortisol and the inflammation, put the inflammation out. And so the body is being discharged. <clears throat> the fact that you may not be sleeping as well as you might is because you have pain or because you have uh, anxiety, irritability, or um, environmental issues, work issues, or other issues um, that are, because if you're stressed at all, you're not going to sleep. That's what court is all about. If you have stress, then it's like um, most people live in a chronically elevated sympathetic state, meaning they're, they're on edge all the time. That exhausts the adrenals <clears throat> and the parasympathetic. And so then inflammation builds and so on. So that's what creates uh, a lot of the anxiety and all of these things that go on and <clears throat> promotes pain with, because of the inflammation. And so I think the best thing to do is just go with it and, and ground yourself out sufficient. And if, you, if you're worried about the pad, then do it outdoors, go to the beach, do whatever you have to do, but ground out the inflammation so that you, your body can recover and, and restore normal sleeping patterns. Leslie has asked um, a question about a friend that she gave a throw to, and her friend is receiving constant electrical shocks during the night. Uh, Leslie suggested to her friend that she uses the throw for just a few minutes at night, but the shocks have not subsided. Is this, uh, does this have something to do with building up a tolerance? No, the shock would be grounding out static charge, either on the, from the mattress or the bedding or something, uh, but there's no current, there's no electricity <clears throat> in the throw. It, when it's grounded. The only thing that happens with a, with a grounding product is when you're connected to the ground rod or the ground 
the electrical ground, which is connected to the rod driven in the earth. So the earth is, is a reservoir of free electrons. So as soon as you make that connection, then in this case, the throw equalizes with the earth. So it's at the same electrical potential as the earth itself. When you sit on it, lie on it, or touch it, then your body equalizes with the earth, no different than standing barefoot on the earth or touching the earth with your hand outdoors. And, um, <clears throat> and, and that's it. Now, if there's static charge in the area, then you are ground. So, you know, you can, you know, some, somebody touches you or something touches you that has static, then you're gonna, there's gonna be a spark. But sparks or intermittent things, when you say there's intermittent, intermittent shocks, that's static electricity being discharged. Yeah, we get this question actually a lot in the wintertime when the air is a bit drier and people have like a flannel sheets or maybe a wool blanket or something. Yes. And they, they think their product is all of a sudden shocking them, but it's, it's the static electricity. It's, it's just, it's, it's doing its job. It's draining the static charge off the body. Yeah. Um, okay, the continuity tester. Can you explain the, what the continuity tester is for, what it, what it does? Okay, the continuity tester, where's my faithful? Uh-oh, somebody cleaned my <laughs> table. Um, the continuity tester is designed to, to test your cords. So you can snap the cord on the continuity tester and, and there's a place in the side where you can plug in your cord. The green light comes on, that means your cord is in working condition. <clears throat> then if you take the uh, plug a mat into an outlet or into a, you know, a port. You connect the ground, the tester into the port and then lay the tester on top of the grounded, grounded mat, turn it on. Then if the mat is working and the wire is working, then it'll turn, the light will turn green. So it means that your, your product is electrically connected to the ground and that it is working. In some cases, depending on a person's hydration, the amount of oil on their fingers or whatever, you can hold the tester in your hand, put your finger on the metal portion in the back. You may have to wet it if your skin is real dry. Then put your hand on the earthing mat and then it'll turn green, meaning that you are conductive. I mean, you are grounded. Sometimes you may have to wet both the mat with your finger and the, and the thing. But what it is, it's a circuit. It means that the mat is connected to the earth. The meter is connected to the earth. So when you put the two together, that means there's a circuit. If, you, if they both weren't properly connected to the earth, there would be no circuit. So if you put yourself in the middle of it and you can test it and, you, and, your, and the meter turns green when you are touching with your fingers, that means that you're, you're in the circuit and you're grounded. Uh, that meter is designed to test the products primarily because everybody has different levels of hydration, different levels of skin resistance and, and lots of other issues, but it, it's fun to play with. All right. Uh, so we have a, a question here um, from Lenny. She's asking about horses and her question is, is quite long, but I'll, I'll try to um, narrow it down here a little bit. You've spoken about horses and how they aren't getting earthing benefits from, uh, you know, they're kept in barns with rubber mats and the rubber insulates them. Uh, so she was wondering, would dry sand be doing the same thing? Are they, are they um, grounded with dry sand? If it's dry sand in the, you know, if there's a concrete stall, concrete floor, with dry sand, uh, yeah, because the sand's gonna hold a certain, amount. It's, it's rock, it's mineral, it's gonna hold a certain amount of moisture, but it's not going to insulate them because the concrete would be grounded, the concrete in the stall. And there's usually enough moisture in the stall, you know, from urine and just whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they hose them down daily. Uh, so there's a lot of moisture in that. And then, so, uh, I don't know if sand would work very well, you know, um, but you better than 
better than a rubber mat. <laughs> yes. And she does say uh, she wants to start using some of our products with um, her horses, but she doesn't know uh, what you might recommend. Would, if they, she's, she's asking if she places a mat on their back, would that uh, ground them through their hair? Well, the horse would tear it off. <clears throat> You'd reach over. <laughs> Horses are pretty rough to try to ground. Um, we have uh, <clears throat> Stephen Sinatra, Dr. Sinatra, he, is, he has horses. And then we've grounded some uh, Arabian, I mean, or some of the fancy horses. And what we do is we use uh, grounded rubber mats. They're similar to the mats that the horse, I mean, it's absurd that we do this, but that's what you have to do. Um, but they're, they're, they're half inch thick rubber mats, but they're conductive and they go together in a little grid and you can make them in the size of any stall. And um, that's the best way to ground a horse in a stall. Mm -hmm. They'll tear anything else up. They don't like strange things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't even like people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know, everybody on the Q&A is asking about flip-flops. So I'm looking at three questions here about flip-flops and Leslie uh, sort of sums it up the best. She says, I have earthing sandals from another company. I know you can't comment on another company's products. But to your knowledge, are there any sandals or flip-flops on the market that do a decent job at grounding? Um, no, there are no flip-flops that, you know, a lot of them have the little um, rivet, you know, the copper rivet through them, which if you're on wet grass or moist earth, you know, in the dirt, I, they probably will intermittently ground you and, and uh, yeah, but they have to ground you, I think. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> what we're trying to do is, you know, there are none that I know of that are, you see, what we've done, and a lot of people, it's a real challenge because we do all this grounded for X number, you know, X period of time. And uh, we have to make sure that the continuity is there and so on. So everybody said, well, I can build a grounding, I can do this, and everybody goes out and does their things. And oftentimes they, they misunderstand that in order to have grounding, if you're gonna have a grounded shoe, you have to be grounded. You have to be, no matter whether you're walking or you know, sitting or whatever, if you're to touching the floor, it has to be grounded. Well, you, you, you know, if you put a little rivet somewhere, oftentimes 90% of the time it's not gonna be grounded if you're sitting or half the time when you're walking because your foot's in the air and so on. But anyhow, there's, that's the issues that we are trying to re, you know, address is to get uh, a conductive flip-flops that are, um, they keep you totally grounded 100% of the time. And we're not too far away. And um, what, else, what else can I say about that? <laughs> I wish I knew somebody, you know, there's a lot of things that are advertised on TV. I mean, on um, the internet as conductive shoes and what they are oftentimes, if they're from China, sometimes they're they have several, you know, like 20, 30 megs of resistance. So you're really not grounded. And there are little plastic things that are really from the electrostatic discharge industry and so on. The shoe that I have recommended the most, I don't have the number and I hate to put it out there without doing this, but it's a Reebok uh, athletic type shoe. It's a, what they call an anti-static shoe. Or for the ESD, if you work in a, a factory that makes chips uh, or software or that has dynamite or gasoline or anything like that, uh, <clears throat> and in some surgical centers. So, but they have a, what they call a soft toe anti-static shoe. You have to use the word soft toe. That means there's no steel in the toe. In work environments, sometimes you have to have the steel toe in case somebody drops something on their foot. Uh, but you don't need that, and they're too heavy. But the soft toe uh, ESD anti-static athletic type shoe. Uh, I'll find that information, put it on, you know, put it out there, and you can put it out there. But it's a pretty rugged, uh, reliable shoe, uh, and that's the one I've recommended the most over the years. Um, 
And those are for people who like to hike and, and get out and, and walk, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not a climbing shoe necessarily, but they're more of a hiking. I mean, if you want to, if you're like a, somebody that goes and walks a couple, few miles at a time. Very good. Um, Anne is asking about the safety cube. Do you have to use it and what is its purpose? Okay, the safety cube, over the years, <clears throat> most outlets, they have a, the ground portion is a spring, you know, it's a stamped out metal piece of brass. <clears throat> and after it's used a few times, it becomes very loose. And what we were finding is that a lot of the grounding cords, when you plugged them into the electric outlets, they would fall out or they wouldn't have good contact. <clears throat> and also a lot of people you know, felt better having the live slots in the outlet covered. Um, even though they're not connected, the ground's not connected to the electrical there. Um, <clears throat> so we designed it primarily to ensure that you have good ground contact so that you have a and, and it's safe because a lot of people don't like to touch electrical outlets. And so it's much safer to do it that. Um, <clears throat> but it's really, uh, and then you can plug two things in at one time. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times uh, people want to use that portion of the outlet for a plug, a lamp plug or something that doesn't have a ground. And you can do that. I hate to say this, but you can do that just by cutting off the little plastic prongs and turning it upside down. Then you can still plug in some of the lamps if that's what the objective is. But it's probably better to use either, um, you know, use them as they're designed <clears throat> and then use, um, you know, the little boxes, whatever you call them. They have mm -hmm. two or three or five outlets that are grounded. Those are, those are excellent for grounding. Okay. I hope that answered that question. Yes. Um, Shirley over on Facebook has asked if you can use a grounding rod, wire, and the metal tape on your bed rather than the sheets, mats, et cetera. Well, you, you can. That's how I started out and did my test. <laughs> Put a ground rod in the earth, run a wire into the bedroom through the window. <clears throat> and connected it with an alligator clip. And I laid metal uh, duct tape, aluminum foil duct tape across my sheet. The problem was, <clears throat> I mean, it works. There's no, there's no question. Uh, the problem was that the tape ended up screwing up the sheets and it kept breaking. When you lay down, you roll over, then the tape would break and lose its conductivity. But the main problem was it messed up the sheets so bad. So if you're sleeping by yourself, it's okay, but uh, otherwise, it's a real problem. Um, <clears throat> but there's probably a better way to do it than to use tape. Uh, tin foil, I wouldn't use. Aluminum foil, I wouldn't use. I wouldn't use copper. But copper and tin foil, or copper and aluminum, are can be toxic to the body. Uh, silver is expensive. Um, I'm not sure what to what to tell you, but use your imagination. Do your homework. Go to the Earthing Institute. <laughs> Uh, Randy is asking how long we should earth each day. Well, <clears throat> in nature, it's like, I'll go back to the animals. I like to use that metaphor. Um, <clears throat> the animals in the wild are grounded 24 seven. We used to be grounded 24 seven. Even back in the 1950s, we were all barefoot or we wore a leather sole shoe and we were at least grounded when we were uh, outdoors or playing or whatever. And we were outdoors more than indoors back then. And then, you know, a hundred years ago or a hundred and some years ago, they said 90, over 90% of the people slept within two inches of the earth. So they were sleeping on floors or food or whatever those things are, especially in China and places like that. And um, they still do. Um, <clears throat> Korea, they have the little two inch, four inch pads that are on the floor. Um, <clears throat> so, but, but anyhow, before that we lived and slept in caves, like that's who, that's who we are, that's where we came from. Uh, so throughout all time, we were naturally grounded. We were 
100% grounded all the time because we were walking on the earth, sleeping on the earth and chasing and preparing food and growing food and all of the things that went with that. So being grounded is our most natural state. Being grounded 24 hours a day is our most natural state. The thing I can say about being grounded 24 hours a day, you can't have inflammation in your body when you're grounded. You have to be ungrounded. You have to wear shoes. You have to be insulated from the earth for extended periods of time. And, and then just normal biological processes, uh, uh, the immune system releasing uh, reactive oxygen, and that's what you know, is the promoter of real inflammation. So anyhow, <clears throat> the thing I try to get across is the animals who live outdoors, they don't suffer from cardiovascular disease, lupus, MS, arthritis, and so on. Like the, the, but the animals indoors, they all manifest similar health disorders to, the, to their owners, including diabetes, cardiovascular, and the list goes on. There's about 85 of them. Um, so, uh, on, so there's no real thing other than it's our most natural state. The only thing I can say is any amount of grounding is good and more grounding is better. And anybody's health is compromised more than 12 hours a day of grounding is going to get you results less than 12 hours a day is going to be challenging. And I'm talking about serious, your health is seriously compromised. Um, let's see here. Lori has said, can you sleep on the earthing mat and put patches on your feet for peripheral neuropathy or is that overdoing it? No, that's what, uh, that's very common. Anybody whose health is, you know, where you have an acute situation or a real trauma in a portion of the body, then the patches are great for that. But sleeping on the mat and the pillow, I mean, they all, it's, more is better. That's all I can tell you. More grounding is better and more area of ground is better because that's the way it is in our natural world. We were, the whole earth is grounded. Yeah. You're underneath of a tree. The whole tree is grounded and you're inside of a, you know, a nice energetic uh, bubble. Uh, Bridget is asking if any of our products use organic cotton. Um, the face of the throws is organic cotton. We, in the early days, this is back in, oh gosh, 206 through back in that time frame. Anyhow, everybody screamed at us, we had to have organic cotton or this would never work, you know, whatever, whatever. So we spent a lot of time, a lot of money developing organic cotton and the silver and everything. And nobody would buy them because the cost was too much at that time, the organics. And then we had the silver problem, you know, the silver wouldn't hold up. So it was just kind of a disaster, but the organic cotton products, no, we, the only thing we have is the base that's on the, um, the throw. Okay. Um, I have two questions here that I, I want to address. Um, Sarah Lee says, uh, won't washing the queen size mattress cover in a washing machine break down the fibers quickly? And there was another one I saw in here about washing in the washing machine. Um, can you just really quick, oh, here we go. Uh, there's concerned about washing their mat in the washing machine and breaking down the fibers. Well, <clears throat> the fibers will not break down and the carbon uh, material on the, the black, uh, it's um, every bit as, um, well, it's, it's almost bulletproof. So <clears throat> the, the thing that would be more problematic would be heat in a dryer. Uh, so it would, you would have to use a very low heat. I've washed, I mean, all these things, I've done everything. I've, we've beat them to death trying to find out what people are going to do to them and will they hold up. Uh, I can guarantee you that just putting it on your bed and just wiping it down uh, with a damp rag or simple green or whatever. And again, remember the carbon is, you're not gonna have the odors and everything that you would have with a normal cotton sheet. Um, <clears throat> um, because it's, it's, it has an inherent uh, um, antibiotic. It's kind of like, um, 
the only people that would know this are crazy people like me. But if you go out into the forest and there's a, um, you know, been a forest fire, <clears throat> the, uh, nothing microbial will grow on a on you know on carbon or charcoal. Charcoal, you know, it's all carbon. Um, <clears throat> so, anyhow, um, they have an inherent antibacterial uh, uh, built in. And, um, but yeah, you can to answer the question. Yes, you can put it in the wash. I wouldn't uh, wash it with blue jeans. I would wash it by itself. Use a mild detergent. Um, <clears throat> as soon as you, if you're going to spin dry it, then of course you're going to have a little creases and stuff. So you would want to put it in a uh, dryer on low heat, keep an eye on it. And then as soon as the wrinkles are gone, just take it out and let it air dry. Should be fine, but it's not going to break up and, and, it's not going to be like the other products. Okay. Uh, Randy is asking if earthing can affect your weight. Well, <clears throat> yes. Um, we'll, I'll say this. Yes and no. We have a lot of people who lose weight with earthing. And, and how it happens is they, they're, once they start sleeping grounded, it reduces the inflammation in the body. And then their, you know, their metabolism changes. And then they have more energy so they can get up and move and go. And, um, but they feel better. Uh, their demeanor changes, everything changes. And, and that's a big part of it. Uh, a lot of people, I can't say that they lose weight. I, I wish I could lose weight. <laughs> I, yeah, there's a box of cookies there. And no matter how grounded I am, I'm gonna put on a pound. <laughs> but. But generally speaking, people who are, I guess I'm not overweight too much, but most people who are, uh, that have weight challenges, we have some pretty remarkable stories. In fact, there's one of them in the Earthing movie, uh, the, the lady uh, and her husband who made that movie, uh, she lost a significant amount of weight from grounding. But again, <clears throat> it's, it's when your health is, compromise and you have your body's full of inflammation then you're full of anxiety and irritability and oftentimes you're easy to get depressed and then that leads to the food uh, you know the comfort foods and all of those kind of things mm -hmm. and so by putting the fire out in your body by reducing the inflammation in your body and so your body can get back to normal then that's going to uh, reduce the anxiety and the irritability and and then you can you can take on challenges and 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 make good progress. Very good. Maya says that um, she's been sleeping with her new earthing mat and she's been dreaming very heavily and it's disrupting her sleep sometimes. Is this her body adjusting? Well, yeah, it's uh, first of all, one of the number one things we hear is people said, you know, state that they started dreaming. Uh, we've been hearing that ever since day one. Wow, my dreams are vivid and um, uh, they're color and they're intense and whatever. Uh, I don't, I'm not a sleep expert, but I understand that if you're dreaming, then you're probably in, you know, stage four or whatever it is, REM sleep. I mean, REM sleep, you're going to improve, you're going to improve your REM sleep. And that's important because that's what resorts your brain, reorganizes memory and all of those things so that your, your brain's working properly. And then all of the other sleep stages, they, you go through about you know, four of them a night up and down. And each time it's going through restoration processes um, to restore the body so the body can recover and, and get out there and do its things. So I, I don't know about exactly what the dreams are, but I've had people tell me that uh, sleep people said that's that it's really remarkable because that's a big improvement in people's sleep when they can um, go through these dream stages. That's all I know about it. But yes, it's very common. It, it won't last unless you go for a period of time without grounding. Then, you know, I, I don't know. It's just I dream all the time. So I don't even think about it. I, I just it's my entertainment. <laughs> Uh, Fred Steyer has asked, um, he uses many methods uh, like 
be healthy, like following a healthy diet, um, and he's new to earthing products. Are there any studies proving that because he's now connected to the earth more frequently, these other methods will become more effective? Well, I don't know that there's, we don't have any studies that state that particularly, <clears throat> but the, the main thing that if you have inflammation in your body, if you have any pain in your body, you wake up in the morning and you're stiff and you, you have to stretch and get the kinks out and whatever. Uh, if you have, you know, just chronic health disorder of any kind, feet, knees, it doesn't matter what it is. You can eat all the best foods in the world and you're going to get some good benefits from it, but it's not going to put out the fire of inflammation. I mean, that's a, um, you have to have a negative charge in your body in order to uh, unwind the reactive oxygen species that are, that remain from, uh, you know, a cytokine storm or a, uh, an immune cascade. So, uh, if you reduce inflammation in the body, then everything in your body is going to function significantly better. You're going to breathe easier. Your, your skin color is going to come back. Your energy is going to come up. Your hair is going to start growing again. I mean, it goes on and on and on. But what it is, is the immune system have health, good health, then you're doing something to, or your immune system is compromised to the point that it can't maintain proper health. So it tries to save as much of the body as possible and the other parts, you know, get, and that's what health disorder is. So uh, to answer your question, absolutely, it's going to improve everything you're doing. It's gonna make everything you're doing more efficient. Very good. Regina, who's watching on YouTube has asked, is there any research regarding grounding and substance abuse and dependence and recovery? Oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I remember um, one of the first things that we did back in, I don't know, it was two, two, I don't remember the years, but 10, 12, 15 years ago, was we were working with a couple of the rehab centers uh, over in Malibu. And a lot of people there that everybody knows but one of the more um, um, interesting ones was somebody that had been in rehab for quite a while. And anyhow, we grounded them. And um, all of a sudden he started calming down because he was one of those people that was just totally wired at all times. But anyhow, he started calming down. And, um, uh, and in fact, a lot of them the people that were involved in, in those, some of those centers that we were at, the main thing grounding does is it calms the nervous system. It reduces the anxiety and the irritability, which is what really uh, is the promoter of people reaching for substances to calm or to help them cope with their feelings. And when you get grounded, the first thing that happens is you're going, it's going to quiet the autonomic nervous system. It's hard to be angry and mad when you're grounded. And it's really hard to be angry and mad if you're grounded outdoors with the sun shining on you. You just turn into a whole different person and so on. But yeah, I say, I, I, can't, I can't get into it in too much detail, but yeah, we have grounded lots and lots of people in rehab. And it's very significant. In fact, this one person says, he's fine as long as I can keep him grounded. And he goes back and he makes his tens of millions of dollars a year, hundreds of millions of dollars a year now. But he's gotta be grounded at all times. Otherwise he goes haywire. But that's a lot of people like that, a lot of uh, high output performers. And, and we ground a lot of performers, a lot of athletes, a, a lot of musicians, a lot of people who are high energy, high output people. They have to recover, they have to maintain their health and they inflammation will knock them out quickly. And in order to stay in the game, whether it's NFL or anything else, you, you gotta recover, you gotta maintain your health. And that's what grounding does. 
Wanda um, has a good question. Can I plug the safety adapter into a power strip or do I have to plug it into the wall outlet? No, you can do either. We get that question a lot. Is earthing, Jean wants to know, if earthing is safe for a person with seizures or epilepsy? Uh, yes. Um, what I would suggest, if you don't have any grounding equipment or anything, uh, you can figure this out just by going out and finding a nice shady spot in your backyard, a little tree with a little sunshine, take their shoes off, socks off, have them sit on the earth, put their feet and their hands on the earth if they're having a seizure or, I mean, it depends there, you know, that's, there's many, many things to tell, but, but anyhow, the best thing to do is you can, just depending on how often they are, how, uh, how intense they are uh, and so on. But yes, we have lots of people. You can go to, I think in the earthing book, there's a few stories. You can go to the earthing Institute and type in seizures uh, and something will come up. You can Google earthing and seizures. Uh, I think you'll find stuff's out there all over the place. But my own experience, yes, I've grounded uh, many of uh, the children with petite mal seizures, uh, many adults with either brain seizures, you know, after surgery and brain uh, um, brain damage uh, from accidents or injuries, and um, <clears throat> and some people who just had them half their most of their life, and then what happens is. Is like one lady who was a uh, acupuncturist up in Ventura, California, she, she had grounded for about three to six months and her seizures dropped 90%. So yes, but every, but, a, but you, again, every case is different. You, you have to experiment, you have to, you have to test this. Grounding is sure. worst case, it's free, go outdoors. Yeah. And if it works, then try to bring it into indoors. And that's what we do is try to help with that. Leslie has a good question as well. Um, can the, she says, can the grounding map, but what I think she's talking about is the universal map. Can that be used in the card and to use the auto coil cord um, that we use for the auto seat map? This way, both the back and the buttocks are in contact with the map. So can you use the auto seat Board with the universal map. Yep, absolutely. That's it's a universal match. You can sit <laughs> on it, sleep on it, walk on it, do whatever. But it's really great. Yes, uh, for to put it in the in the car and have it go up. The only thing is, you'll sweat a little bit more mm. on the back. I mean, your your won't sweat. Your your shirt will be more damp. Mm -hmm. But yes, absolutely. Um, Sarah Lee will be traveling to Costa Rica in August for two weeks and wants to take the mat with her. Is there an adapter? Um, I, I, I'm not sure which one, which adapter, but I think there is an, an adapter for um, Costa Rica. And if, okay. if not, then of course the ground rod. Are there any tiles for the kitchen or bathroom that allow grounding? Uh, a salt tile or stone, uh, some marbles. Um, yes, I mean, just as long as it's stone and uh, or clay, so like salt -teal. And <clears throat> then when you put them down, you have to make sure that they don't put the rubber adhesives or the synthetic adhesives on the floor and then you put the tiles down because that insulates the tile from the floor. If you use a regular cement grout, then the whole floor will be conductive. Then when you put it, if you use saltile, then use a water-based sealer rather than a, uh, you know, like a urethane sealer. So right along those lines, Wanda is asking, if I walk barefoot in my house all day, am I grounded? Well, it depends on the floors, the carpets, and so on. Now, <clears throat> being grounded, even if your floors are not grounded, if you, uh, if you go barefoot in your home, you're going to be significantly better off because every time you take a step in your house with shoes, on a carpet especially, you're building up static charges on your body. 
you, <clears throat> when you sit on a couch and get up, you're creating static charges. Um, you get in and out of your bed, no matter what you do. Uh, you know, if you have slippers and stuff and you're getting out of bed, if you go barefoot, <clears throat> then what happens, you don't have that static, the static charge doesn't happen because you have bare skin. And, and it's just, so it's just the two dissimilar, dissimilar materials. When you just pick a foot up off the floor like this, you're creating static charge because some of the electrons are being left behind and that's what creates the charge. So going barefoot in your home, whether you have a grounded floor or not, you're going to feel a lot better. Very good. Uh, Terrence is asking, is there a way at home to measure in a blood sample the impact of using a grounding mat? A way at home? I don't think so. I think that if you're gonna draw blood, you have to go to the lab and have them draw it. Um, if you wanted to use dark field or a light field, this, whatever it's called, um, you'd have to have maybe somebody come to your home that does that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think there's any way that you can do it that I can think of. No. Okay. Uh, Jeff is asking about something, what he calls a reverse battery. He means something which you could take with you that has a surplus of electrons and when you, when you weren't able to properly ground and properly earth. The way a battery works, it's like <clears throat> if you have a battery, two wires coming out and you put a light bulb in the middle, you connect all of them together, the light bulb will light. That's because the electrons are flowing from this side of the battery and being pulled in to the other side of the battery, leaving the negative side and being pulled into the positive side. Otherwise, the light won't work. So <clears throat> you can't get a free electron from a battery. Those electrons belong to the battery. They'll go from one side to the other, but you can't take them away from the battery. Um, otherwise, I would have had that one uh, on the market many, many years ago. I would have called it the blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, CJ is asking, how much of our diseases for both us and our pets is due to food and toxins and stress, and how much is due to not being grounded? Well, <clears throat> you will find that people who eat perfectly, who exercise perfectly, or do everything, do everything they're supposed to do, and they're still sick, mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> or their health is compromised. And the thing that's compromising their health is an inflammation-related health disorder. That's everything from autism to Alzheimer's to lupus to MS and cancer and on and on and on. These are all inflammation-related health disorders. What that means when you say the word inflammation, it means the immune system is compromised. The immune system is, you have an autoimmune disease, you have an autoimmune loop. The immune system itself is re releasing enough reactive oxygen and there's not enough redox potential to reduce it. So it keeps damaging uh, healthy tissue. And then when it tries to fix it, it's creating more. So it's a chain reaction. The only way you can put that fire out, the word inflammation body on fire, the only way you can put the fire out in the body is you have to ground it. You have to add free electrons to it. You have to give it, um, because these are charged uh, uh, reactive oxygen species are charged uh, molecules, charged particles, and they're, they're so they're missing an electron. If they don't get an electron from the environment, then it's going to take one from a healthy cell, damage it. That's what that's what inflammation is, chronic. So, <clears throat> um, I don't know. I lost my track. I got in a loop. <laughs> uh, grounding or the. The diseases and everything that we're dealing with, you know, how much of that is related to food, toxins, stress, okay. not being grounded? Um, <clears throat> grounding, so, so first of all, what grounding does, it's about the immune system. Think of it that 100%, it's about restoring your immune system's ability to maintain health. Mm -hmm. Then food, oxygen, movement. Um, the better the food, the less the immune system has to work. 
you know, cleaning up toxins. The better the air, the less the immune system has to, you know, deal with the issues in the lungs. Exercise just makes everything work better. Um, so it's really, really quite simple. It's about nature. Think about it this way. In nature, health is natural. Look at the wild animals who live in nature who haven't been, their environment hasn't been contaminated by man. They have perfect health. Um, on the other hand, animals that are, you know, fed the animal, the food that we feed them today and the toxins and everything, it's, it's universal, but it, anyhow, and it's really about nature. You want to go back and look at nature, look at nature, study nature, because that's who you are. That's what you are. And you need to restore uh, your connection with nature. And then health is a gift. Health is free. Health is natural. I think that's what a lot of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we spoke earlier about um, sleeping with sheets or, you know, clothing with our products. Uh, but this person, Sparkle, is asking specifically, is it okay to sleep directly on our products, our sleep mat, mattress covers? Yes. I'm 77. I'll be 77 in a few weeks. I sleep directly on it. I sleep better that way. And it doesn't bother me at all. And, uh, and there's lots of other people who especially older people, because you're, you're going to have the aches and pains as time goes on. That's entropy. It's real. And um, uh, so, you know, I, I, I recover myself with a light sheet. I, I mean, I, I'm warmer with less covers when I sleep directly on it. Um, you know, what can I say? Uh, a lot of people, that's what they do. They take the, um, the sheets off and sleep directly on it. Uh, and they, they don't go back. There's a reason they don't go back because one, it's very tolerable to sleep on. It's no different than sleeping on a couch. Uh, you know, the average couch that you have that has leatherette material type. Um, but anyhow, yes, it's perfectly okay. All right. And, and you don't, you, and you don't have, you don't have, you don't build up the odors and the oils and things, you know, on the mats like you would on other situations. And if you want to wipe them down, just go wipe them down. I just wipe them down with my towel once in a while I'm through taking my shower. <laughs> Very good. Um, Michael says that his dad has overworked his hands for decades. He has a bit more than just arthritis at this point. If he grounds at night, how much time would pass before he would expect to heal himself? before he would heal himself? Yes, that's what he said. Okay, <clears throat> well, first of all, the first thing you do is you put, use the patches and get, stop the pain. I mean, put out the fire of the inflammation and that means the pain will start coming down. Then the body can start to heal and recover. And depending on the amount of damage that's been done, that will dictate the time it takes to recover. But if you can keep the fire out, if you can keep the inflammation down or out, then the body can recover. It will recover. I mean, I've seen people with, you know, arthritis that they're just all gnarled up like this. And then a couple, three years later, their hands are back to pretty much back to normal. How does the body do that? We don't know. How does the body do anything? We don't know, but it does it all. If you just yeah. don't interfere with it. <laughs> Uh, Allison is asking if you know if electromagnetic acupuncture uses a form of earthing to generate the biocurrent that they use to enhance the needle treatment. That I do not know. Um, I do know in Japan, and they have they did some studies a while back where they grounded the needles um, during acupuncture, and that generated. You know, I think that studies online grounding, grounded acupuncture <clears throat> and, uh, but there are benefits, but I don't, it's not an art that I really fully understand. I understand that it's grounding because you're opening, creating pathways mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the body because there's so much resistance on the skin. Um, it's very effective, but I don't know the science behind it. It's sufficient to speak to it. Sure. Maya has um, a question. 
You mentioned in a previous Q&A that you had tried other metals to use in your product besides silver. One of the metals you tried was stainless steel. How did this compare with the carbon as I have seen other earthing companies that use stainless steel fibers in their products? Uh, <clears throat> we experimented with stainless steel many years ago <clears throat> and you know, put it in the sheets. We have made some throws with it. The problem is you wash them one time and because the stainless is brittle, then it all breaks into little pieces and loses its conductivity immediately. Uh, if you don't ever wash it, it might last a little bit longer, but the fact that you're laying on, it's, it's very brittle. Uh, so stainless is not a, not a product you can use for conductivity with, with a 100, 200 pound body on it. Uh, so <clears throat> stainless is out the window. We threw that one out many years ago. Uh, <clears throat> we tried copper. Copper is, is, uh, can be toxic to a lot of people. Aluminum is toxic. Um, the only thing that you can go with is platinum, um, gold, silver. Silver is the perfect conductor. It is the most perfect conductor, uh, uh, copper second. <clears throat> um, gold is you know, prohibitive. Um, <clears throat> it'll last forever. Silver is uh, affordable, but the <clears throat> if you remember when you were a kid and you would go to your grandma's house and they'd polish the silver, and if anybody touched it, then the next morning when it's time to have dinner or Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, there would be fingerprint on it. And so the oil and the salts in the oil on your skin, <clears throat> uh, that's what creates that corrosion or that oxidation on the silver. Well, that's what happens with the, with the silver sheets. As soon as you <clears throat> sleep on them a little bit, uh, then that starts to build up. And what it does is the silver is still conductive vertically going this way, but because the sheets are conductive horizontally, the, you start getting cracks in the silver all over, especially where there's body perspiration, salts and so on. And so the silver cracks and the silver's still there, it just cracks and it's no longer condu conductive. So that was the problem. Uh, this is millions of dollars of research over 10, 12, 14 years. That we have, we started with carbon, but carbon, carbon is the perfect product because it's, um, you know, the body is 90% carbon. But anyhow, um, uh, it's the perfect, but the problem was the carbon fibers were not advanced enough at that time. So we had to uh, use a special process. And when you could wash it three or four times, then the carbon was, you start losing the carbon and it would start losing the conductivity. So that's why we were forced into silver uh, while we were doing all of our studies and everything. But then as time went on, <clears throat> we were able to figure out how to use 100% carbon conductive and um, not have any oxidation and, and have what we call a bulletproof conductive sleep pad, sleep mat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, bulletproof. it's gonna last, it's gonna be conductive. As long as you're alive, you have to burn it in order for it not to be conductive. So <clears throat> anyhow, uh, so we've tried everything. We know uh, every metal there is, we know uh, every configuration there is, and we were left with no alternative. And the problem is earthing could never be effective and go to market unless you have a bulletproof product that works every time, no matter what, and that it's affordable for somebody that's on welfare or, or limited social security or, People who really need it, it's got to be affordable. It's got to be affordable and it's got to be bulletproof and it's got to work. So that was our objective for 10 years, 15 years. And we finally got there and we're in the final stages of perfecting that system. Uh, and we'll be adding some new products later this fall. <clears throat> but um, yeah, we've done it all. We've tested everything. There's nothing out there we don't know about. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Derek is... Um asking about grounding and if it can have positive effects on shift workers. He's been working as a first responder for 14 years and he has to do um, night shifts, a couple night shifts per week. So he's wondering how grounding might help. Well, um, we know that when we did our cortisol study, 
um, we learned that the stewardesses were in the study, their cortisol was off three hours from the people in California. And so <clears throat> when they would fly to California and sleep grounded their cortisol, when they were grounded would automatically within 15, 20 minutes recalibrate and be on California time rather than New York time. That's what jet lag is. You, have, you feel like you have that acid in your blood the next morning. That's elevated cortisol. Um, <clears throat> so we have a lot of firefighters. We have a lot of people who do shift work. And the thing that grounding does for them is, is it helps, I mean, it helps normalize the cortisol. Um, and, um, yeah, it's a rough, shift work is rough, no matter what. But I think that it's worth trying. Uh, again, it's lifestyle, a lot of things will play into it, but it will resync your body with the earth and it'll help you sleep better when you do sleep. And um, I don't have any more to answer on that. Okay, I think we have time for one more question here. Uh, Maya, Maya says she has an unusual question, but is it possible to ground her drinking water? What would happen if I put a pitcher of water on a grounding? My question would be what pitcher does she, she have to use a clay pitcher or something for, it to, for that to be grounded? <clears throat> no, this is, a, this is a question that we get a lot. And uh, Gerald Pollack, who works with water um, and you know the characteristics of water mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> that whole um, body of research, uh, so grounding water. First of all, you can ground yourself and drink the water, then it's automatically grounded when you drink it. Okay, or you can get it out of the faucet. If you have water that you can drink out of the faucet, then it's grounded because it's coming from the earth and through pipes and that's all grounded. If you want to um, ground still, I mean, still water, I mean, uh, you can, Put a ground rod in it. You can get a silver pitcher like they used to use in the olden days. There was a in the old days they used to use silver to let water sit in it overnight before drinking it. And it was especially in Europe and, and the upper class in Europe, and that's why they called them blue bloods because they drank so much silver that their sometimes their noses were turned blue, but their brother was blue from the silver content from drinking the water out of silver pitchers. But, um, but anyhow, you can get a copper pitcher, you can get what, why not? Or just ground yourself while you're drinking the water. If you have other reasons to ground the water, then uh, just throw a little copper wire in it and connect it to ground. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Clint. Okay, well. We are at the end of our time up. here. I know. Yeah. I know. I just want to uh, let everybody know that we get tons and tons of questions. We try to get to all of them. Uh, we can't. I know some of you, you know, if you, it can take us 30, 40 minutes sometimes until we finally get down the list and get to your question once you've posted it. So I highly recommend that you log in early, ask your question early. We are here every Monday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, answering your questions. If you haven't already done so, please follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletter. You can do that at earthing.com. You'll be kept uh, in the loop regarding any sales, webinars, and new product announcements. And also be sure to check out our Earthing YouTube channel where you can watch past webinars uh, where we answer tons and tons of questions. And you can also watch the Earthing movie for free. So thank you, Clint. Thank you to the customer service team that's been working in the background, helping me out here. And um, Good. I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. Thank you. Enjoyed Take it. Care. Anytime. Yes. Okay, bye. As always. Take care.